Okay, so this is a replay cast of a game I played against Olivier Dulac. Olivier Dulac, for those of you who don't know, is, as far as I'm aware, still the number one tabletop Blood Bowl player in in the whole world when it comes to NAF rankings. I believe that's with Skaven, uh, not with Wood Elves, although I understand their Wood Elf ranking is also very high. Um, very, very good and renowned tabletop coach. They also have their own YouTube channel in French if you'd like to check that out. Um, but uh, it was a really fun game that I played off stream and uh, even though it's already been recapped elsewhere, I thought maybe it'd be nice to have um, a little recap here and talk about things from my perspective. Um, Wood Elf Mirror, uh, this is my team. So I've been doing a bit of an experiment with my team. Um, which I've been playing off stream because the Blood Bowl 3 ladder has allowed random skills again this season but has set a TV cap a 1.6 million TV what you're seeing is a lot of the bashy teams randoming strength skills very effectively to save themselves team value so what I've been trying to do with my off stream Wood Elf team is to see if it's possible by randoming very aggressively to get a comparably good value Wood Elf team so I'm, I'm, it's an experiment that I'm working on and uh, part of how I'm doing that is I've rolled random secondaries on the Treeman and both War Dancers. And with the War Dancers, I'm really only looking for two hits. I'm looking for Juggernaut or Mighty Blow. And uh, we hit Juggernaut early, which is nice. We haven't managed to hit Mighty Blow. I'd probably take Guard as well. It's the other one, so maybe a third, but I really want Mighty Blow. And, um, and so I've just been cycling War Dancers really aggressively. Like every time we get to six SVP, we take a random secondary. It's basically always been my multiple block which I can't use and uh, and then if I don't get something I like I get rid of it I might keep something like break tackle and then spin again for the next level and see if that works out but in general I'm fishing for mighty blow to make it worthwhile the catches have taken random primaries they both rolled sneaky git on random primaries so we have two sneaky gits which is a bit much the thrower randomed on the passing tree and got a hail mary pass which normally would get you fired right away but it had enough SVP to random the second one as well and so we randomed again and got leader. So that's kind of just the same as paying full price for leader for now. And we've got a random primary for Dauntless and Alignment as well. Olivier Dulac um, has a uh, basic tree, has a Juggernaut strip ball war dancer. I think there's two ways you can go with Juggernaut on Wood Elves. Juggernaut with Frenzy turns that into a, a sideline menace that's really good for surfing opponents, really good for... Um, making opponents position away from the sidelines which narrows the pitch for them uh just generally a really interesting threat to have i think the frenzy lets you do some fun chain plays at times as well but juggernaut and strip ball is another really great combination because that means that if you roll a both down you still get the push which means you still get the effects of strip ball so if you're rolling a one dice leaving into a cage or even rolling uphill blocks jumping into a cage you've actually got a really reliable chance of getting to use your strip ball so it's it's a really nice combination i do like this as well a lot um then uh, the other war dancer is also a big war dancer they have a wrestle catcher which looks like it was a random general skill they also have a leader thrower they have a blodge lineman they have a wrestle lineman uh, they've randomed one of those skills on both of those so that's some good value and they've got more rerolls than us so they've got two rerolls and the leader we've got one reroll on the leader and that because of that we have a slightly cheaper team which gets a keg i don't know if i properly mentioned so just to go back i i random agility skills for the tree because i think the um i think actually when you look at the agility tree it's um crazy how many quite good ones there are for a tree man like surprising to me how many good ones there are for a tree man because Dodge, dodge is good for a tree man it'll help it stand up not many of the high strength players that hit it have tackle so it's good for that you're not often going to actually be dodging it but it's just good for keeping it upright jump up is good for a tree man defensive is good for a tree man if you give it guard afterwards um sure feet is good for a tree man because it's only got movement too um i think there's another one that i'm forgetting as well i'm sure there was one more that i liked i can't think what it is right now Oh, niche, but I think that sidestep is actually really interesting on a tree because you've already got sand firm, so you don't need it. But having a sidestep tree is really going to put people off blocking a tree because if you've got a sand firm tree and you've got some strong players against it, at least you know if you hit it, 
and it wants to stand firm and staying where it is. If you're taking that gamble against the sidestep tree, that tree is going to reposition itself to either get a free hit on one of your players or it's going to reposition itself to potentially be inside your cage. I, I don't think you'd ever pay full price for it. But as a random hit, I'm not sure it's terrible. So I think there's 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 a lot of interesting hits on the agility tree for a, for a tree. Whereas on general, which is the other thing you'd want, it's really only pro or block. So I thought I'd give it a go. We hit dodge and uh, and I'm keeping it for now. And we'll see how we like it. So yeah, I get a keg here and uh, I think um, an assistant coach. I would not be at all surprised if Sidesip and Sandfirm was bugged in by ball three. Nor would I. Nor would I. Yeah, um, random skill. Uh, so, um, Olivia, do you like won the coin toss? And chose defense first, which is what I would have done as well. If I had won the coin toss, I think defense first in a wood elf mirror makes lots of sense. I think it's interesting that neither of us have mighty bow, because if I was choosing skills... I would probably have taken Mighty Bow before Juggernaut. Um, and Mighty Bow in this matchup obviously would be quite a good threat. I'm going to change the players to blue and red just so it's clearer where each person's players are because the colour schemes are similar. So, starting off with our box. Went for a two dice here. Went for this hit with the Frenzy one got I think a nice removal right away and then this is the problem with frenzy we had to follow because it's frenzy and guess what happened we had to follow we tried to dodge away and we immediately snaked so pretty rough start we haven't covered the ball but it's a deep kick so that's why I felt okay taking the blocks and not worrying about the ball right away we have got a throw back here so even if this goes wrong we have a chance to pick it up and throw it forward was my thinking behind not um not worrying about the ball more at the start of that drive. But yeah, pretty unlucky snake there. And Olivier doing definitely exactly what I would want to do here in their shoes, which is immediately split my team and get into this gap. However, luckily for me, Olivier rolled a snake right back. So I rolled a very unlucky snake and then Olivier rolled one too. And in some ways his is worse because it also led to removal. So here... um. There's not actually because of that snake came so quickly. And maybe they could have moved some other players first before doing that dodge, I'm not sure. But because that snake came so quickly, um, there's not that much pressure on the ball. But the one pressure there is, is obviously very good at sacking the ball, right? Like that's got Juggernaut and Strip Ball. I haven't got any sure hands on my team. So for me, for sure, on this drive, um, I'm thinking right away, can I hit this? Andy talked about this on his recap of this game. Um, I also did think, can I get a three dice on it? Because we haven't got a tackle or wrestle. So the odds of getting it down aren't amazing. But with three dice, it's a lot better. Um, the problem is I don't want to use this place as an assist because if I get it down, I'm fouling it. That's 100% my thinking right now is if we can get this on the floor, we foul it. And I think it's not that easy to get three dice without using that because you have to go one, two, three. You need another assist from somewhere. So you're either using this, which involves doing a tree hit first, or this, which involves doing some rushes. So I decided the three dice hit wasn't worth it. Um, too much risk before going to secure the ball. Yes, Henning, yeah, this is a replay of a, a game against the world's number one player on tabletop. Uh, I got lucky here, rolled double powers. So, very, very lucky. We've got that on the floor. And now, a thousand percent, I'm doing this foul. There's nothing more important right now than fouling off this player because this is the most threatening player they have. So, I say nothing else more important. I do go to pick the ball at first, but I would have put the rerun in, in on that 100% to make sure I get this foul. Um, get the foul, we do get the KO, we do get caught. So it's a send off for a player who's only KO'd, but again, it's changed this drive completely because that is their best ball sacker. No longer available for my offensive drive. Mm -hmm. And so, and so yeah. Um, so Olivier does an incredibly aggressive move now. I thought it was aggressive going for their ward answer with two dice. Goes to my ward answer with one dice and rolls a power on it. So just needed to be a six. Nothing else knocks that down. That hasn't got tackle or wrestle. Need to be a six. Rolled the six. Knocks that down. And uh, 
And you can probably guess what's coming next here. Because uh, I would do the same in their position once it's knocked down. Even though it's not a great foul, we do the foul. It's got two assists. It's not too bad. Gets a KO. So, again, I've had some luck because um, I rolled double powers to take out their wall dancer. But some luck coming back Olivier's way. One dice pow and where my sneaky git got sent off first time. Uh, the uh, non-sneaky git here gets to hang around. So, this turn we're just very much about securing the ball. I don't know why I haven't stood that one up yet. That's bad. I don't really know why I haven't stood that up. Because that can be done before a tree does a two dice block. Um, and then we're just going to take this sub blitz, which is two dice, because that's a catcher. So this turn, we're um, we're just really trying to solidify our offensive position after losing that other ward out there. Oh yeah, don't know why I didn't stand that up first. Technically possible to get it on the ball here, I think, but it would be so aggressive in the recovery that even uh, a very aggressive coach like Olivier is not going to go for that very often. Um, so they just go for a safe hit to... Same as we just took a safe turn to try and get ourselves back into a, a more solid position. They've taken a turn to get their defence back in front of us. Um, I left this here and didn't follow up because I thought it was going to be a good trade for me with the two trees because my tree has dodge and theirs doesn't, but they rolled the power on the tree, so the tree goes down. Um, they have left a gap here to go around the outside. Now, this came up on, a, on Andy's recap, and I think it's worth talking about. Um, what I'm seeing here is I can take my team around the outside of that space, so I'm obviously going to do that. Um, but I want to blitz. In terms of blitz targets, what's attractive here? So you're going to blitz one of these two. That's got dodge and wrestle, so it's not that attractive of a, a blitz target, whereas this is no protection and it's got leader. So I have a choice here that I either can blitz this with out using block or I can, or I have to do it with this one, but then it has to do either a rush or a GFI. Um, and I decided to do it with the ward answer, which does mean I'm risking a one in 36 turnover, which would have been pretty catastrophic. Um, so that's a decision that I make. And the other decision that I think Andy pointed out that was perhaps a mistake by me is to get the assist is I put this um, lineman Sorry, this lineman comes in here and I'm blocking my way out here. So probably what I should have done is put that assist into that square. But I do the dodge and get the power here, so that's worked out fine. Um, a random skills variant. I just talked everyone through it. Um, I can explain it again to Min, but yeah. So yeah, now we are trying to get the ball onto a slightly better ball carrier with dodge here. Um, I haven't spent the reroll, so put in that rush. Don't need to spend the reroll here. It's not safe, safe, but it's safe enough. Now, I was not ready for the level of aggression that Olivier has here. Um, Olivier's play here is more aggressive than what I would have seen or thought because uh, we immediately bring this through to get an assist on the, on the uh, or to cancel out this player. So, yeah, super interesting, super aggressive uh, plays here. Come straight through on the dodge there. And then is leaping to avoid doing all those dodges. Makes that leap. Gets in. Two dice in the ball. But they fail the rush. Rerolls it. And then rerolls the hit as well. So three rerolls in one turn. Gets very unlucky to find the double scarlet at the end. Even more unlucky that that ward answer is injured. So a big swing there on that play. Which I have to admit I just was not expecting to see that level of aggression on that turn. But it's worked out very well for me now. Because I now get to... Um, serve that catcher as well um, yeah I, I I understand I understand the reasons for it and um, it definitely does it was actually like when I when I add it all up it wasn't crazy dice to get two dice on the ball I'm not convinced their recovery was going to be amazing but they didn't have a lot of players left on the pitch so it's not necessarily going to get better like you say so this again, Andy called me out on this and he was right. This player should be one square further up because I'm going to take this block with a loner. And if it fails, I mean, there's not that much risk because he's lost any players now, but there is some risk. Um, whereas if I'm one square further up, there's just much less risk if this block fails of things being terrible. So a um, mistake by me there, I think. Um, but it's fine because it's just a push. So yeah, I, I am repeating some things that Andy picked up because because they were interesting observations and they were helpful. 
Yeah, Henning, he's, he's, I've never played him before. Reminded me a lot of Crystal Hunter as well, because Crystal Hunter is like the number one most aggressive that, um, that I think of playing Bud Bowl online. And uh, yeah, it seems that Olivier is very similar. So we're thinking about a serve here, but unfortunately we roll pal, so we don't get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and one thing for him, I think, is an interesting observation. Um, this is a handoff because we want to score on this player. We want to get the SVP on this ward answer because, as I said at the beginning, I'm taking random secondaries on the ward answers. So we're just trying to keep level up ward answers as quick as we can, roll the secondary, and then cycle or keep, depending on what we roll. Um, but yeah, I, I think something that was said to, to me a while ago that I think is really true is... Um, the better your opponent, the more aggressively you probably should play. Because if you're playing against Olivier Dulac and he gives you a chance to roll a 4 plus to do something, you should probably take it. Whereas against another coach, you might think, well, they'll give me a better chance than that. You know that someone who's really good won't give you that chance. So it makes sense to be more aggressive. And so if Olivier is used to playing on top tables and playing really good coaches all the time, that's probably another reason why it's part of his mentality. Mm. But yeah, I think that was a really interesting observation. Um, so yeah, um, cheeky one dice power from our tree on their tree. Now, I'm thinking here everything is fine and everything is not fine. Uh, it's a five plus to hit this ball with wrestle, but you know who's going to take that five plus to hit the ball with wrestle? This guy. This guy's taking that five plus to the ball with wrestle all day long. I probably should dodge this and put it in front of that square. So yeah, five plus in, no problem. Sack the ball with wrestle, no problem. And he's not done there. He's thinking, how am I gonna get this ball? Casual, uh, set up a scoring threat as well. I love, I love setting up a scoring threat. This player here, it's got to do what? Three, three, two, four, and then a four plus pickup. Yep, just uh, just make all of those and even tries the pass, but lucky for me, the pass fails. I mean, I think that's another thing you see with really good coaches. Like, as long as there's a chance, they're still trying to take that chance. They still had a chance to do it, so they tried. Like, never giving up on situations too early is something that I think um, I've talked about in my streams that I definitely think I see with good coaches all the time not giving up on a situation too soon and yeah even that situation there where they olivia had like four players left on the pitch was still still finding ways to make it scary for me i love games like this so there's so much more interesting than just playing a bash team that grinds you down like it's so much more like stressful but interesting to play these games i think Yeah, knowing when to try to be lucky. And that's what Crystal Hunter has in spades as well, right? Like, that's definitely Crystal Hunter. Um, what I think makes him a great coach. So, I've got 10 players. I've got no illusions in my head. I'm certain that Olivier Dulac is going to know how to do a one turn. He's got eight players. Luckily for me, he's got uh, three of the movement eight ones missing. Um, but it looks like he's going for um, the whole method with this setup. I'll pause it in a second so we can look at it because um, something happens which means we never really get to find out. Mm. Oh, it's going to go to pause. Right, so I do get a solid defence. Oh, I was hoping to show you the, the setup before we did that. Oh, well. Um, so I got a solid defence and that would have made it much harder. So before the solid defence, I just had the... Can I go back with that? There, okay, so this is the setup I had. So I'm guessing the play was going to be run the ward answer here. You've got two dice to push into here. That gets your first push with the tree, you push to here. Then you've got your second push from here and you've got your third push from here. So it definitely all lines up. Um, with no rerolls, the reason that I'm okay with this is I'm forcing him to do the whole method, which adds a push. So he's got to get three pushes before he gets the... Um, the uh, um, one that can be a pal. Now he has got Juggernaut, which makes that more likely. And this is going to be a three dice of the tree, so it's it's probably not terrible. 
but making someone use the whole method is better than if they can get the first push not using this method um, and then even if they get them all they're going to have to do um, a 4 plus dodge, 3 plus dodge, 3 plus dodge so I've tried to make it as hard as I can and by using the tree on the one side of the formation it means they can't come to this side with the number of players they have so that was the thinking of my setup sorry the gargle laugh we're doing a recap of a, a game we played off stream last night and then we'll get to the skaven now as it happens this pass fails i guess they're just passing straight to the catcher so yeah we did the solid defense and complicated the path but we never got as far as doing it anyway so that's half time Things looking quite good for me so far, right? Like it's 1-0. Um, going on to defence. Can't feel too bad about that. <laughs> doesn't doesn't stay this good. <laughs> uh, so solid defence again is nice. Uh, they hadn't marked our tree, so we were able to put our tree onto two players. Uh, once again we're going to see but it's super interesting how Olivier approaches this offense so Olivier is absolutely not playing for a draw and you can see that right away from the way they go for their offense um, what they do here is uh, is clever I think and a thing that I will think about in Elf Mirrors because when you're not playing as elves um, you don't want your team to get split, right? Like when I'm playing against slower teams, I talk about it all the time. One of the things I'm trying to do is split my opponent's team. But Olivia here has split his own team because actually with, with Wood Elves, that's given me more problems to solve. Um, I can't just swamp one side of the pitch because if I go too heavy to this side, they can just bring it to this side. If I go too heavy to that side, then they've got scoring threats here and right away. From my point of view, I'm not realistically thinking I'm going to stop Olivier from scoring. What I'm trying to do is to um, put some pressure on that something could go wrong. And if it goes wrong, great, we can go tune up. Um, but if not, get them to score quickly and we'll get back on offense. And then it's one all, but we have the ball, is how I'm thinking about things at this point. Which is why I went for an aggressive tree blitz. I don't often do that, but just to get some damage back, I wanted to get the mind hit in. Um, and uh, then created a bit of a screen here to make it harder for them to go for this uh, pass straight to these players here and then definitely doing this all day long getting um, tackle zone on their thrower because now they've got to do a dodge, scary dodge in their own backfield uh, yeah, I don't know if you... Um, in fact, I think I just missed, failed to pick that up just now. I don't know if you, you guys all saw, but Olivier did apo the lineman there. So I badly hurt a lineman with my tree. And Olivier apoed it immediately. There was no hesitation, which I thought for a ladder team is quite rowdy, right? Because you've got more important players that could get um, injured. Whereas I didn't apo my badly hurt a few seconds before. And that's definitely, I think, a difference there in the sort of tabletop mindset. I think Olivier is playing this as you would an AF game, where it's like all that matters is win the game and for win the game keeping that extra player around definitely is a strong choice so yeah Olivier is just rolling all the dice this turn does the dodge does the pass does another dodge does two rushes does the handoff and scores so there was there was a real chance of things going wrong there with that many two pluses I think we're probably getting into the territory of of at least like a a 10% or higher chance that could go wrong so there was a chance um, and we created that risk for them but um, again aggressive coach going for the um, going for the jugular I guess and as a consequence because they did their apple and we didn't actually they're a player up right now they've got to um, they've got um, uh, 10 players we've got 9 and the camera just flipped I don't know why but do you know what? Maybe it's interesting to see it from this side. So, little insight into me right here. Um, 
I think that I did a lot wrong on these next couple of turns. <laughs> I think I did a lot wrong on uh, these couple of turns. I think I was too aggressive with that setup to begin with. I also did a tree block with a 1 in 27 fail right away. Um, I think I'm a little bit flustered by how aggressively Olivier is playing and how well he's playing and I think I'm making some pretty questionable decisions but I think this at least is better like I've brought some players back I've made this more solid because of course I'm in a position here where I and this is why I went to carry on the ward answer as well I'm in a position here where I it's one all and it's my ball right so it's, it's a winning position in theory in theory that's okay I think it's interesting to see it from Olivier's side here as well so Olivier is Again, it's probably moot to say it. Very aggressive with the positioning here right away. Uh, gets a nice hit with their ward answer. This is the bit that I'm... I'm a bit puzzled by this, and yet at the same time, as you'll see, it, it kind of works pretty well in the end. I'm looking at that and immediately just thinking, well, I want to surf that, right? I've got Frenzy here. That's a free hit I can take. So I'm immediately thinking about surfing this. And, uh, and while I'm going to... Now, there's an interesting question here about how I set this up because I could have brought this round to be the assist. And the reason I don't and the reason I get myself in trouble here is that I don't want to put this player one square to the sideline. And maybe that's even why Olivier sets this trap. Because if I put this player one square to the sideline and then he uses strip ball on it, the ball can scatter out and I don't want that. But I think because I don't want that, I get myself in different kinds of trouble as a result. Um, I mean, this is already quite risky because I'm now doing this without um, block, but this part of it works out, right? Like, this is also just bad. This is just bad positioning because I position that badly. Need to be one square back. I now end up doing two, two dice into one, so that's just bad. But Juggernaut gets me there and we do get the serve. So definite mistakes made on that turn. Um, but even having got lucky there with the one dice, I haven't got a safe space to put the ball now. The only safe square would have been, and I say safe because the ward answer can still walk in on a, jump in on a four plus, but the only safer space would have been if I went two to the sideline, which again, I didn't want to do. So what I did here, and more mistakes are about to be made, but what I did here is just put it here on the basis that what Olivier is probably going to do now is, uh, Palpatin, thank you so much for the raid. Um, what Olivier's, what I'm expecting Olivier to do here and what Olivier does do here is go the long way around because there's less resistance going that way around. But the good thought on that is that there's a good scatter direction for me. However, I still think I make a pretty terrible decision here, which is, um, and I think Olivier did a really smart thing basing these two players up and tempted me into this terrible decision. But um, uh, Olivier has based this player. I think I just need to dodge this player. This player needs to dodge and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush. It needs to do two two pluses, because at least that would seal this gap to some extent. I mean, it's only three pluses, but I think I needed to do that, and I didn't do it. I thought that strength tool I'll hit it, which was definitely a mistake with hindsight. And I think I was also thinking when I did that, that I could just use this player to come down. The problem with this player is this player is movement busted. Which I had not taken account of, so that player really can't get around that easily. I think even then I probably should just base this lineman, which I don't do, so I've made it very easy for Olivier to get the hit. So pretty sloppy, I think, that whole turn. Lots of mistakes made. Um, Olivier does come straight in, goes to the one dice. That's good enough for strip ball. Now, here I would say that Olivier gets a bit lucky, because uh, the scatter doesn't look promising. Um, but uh, if you just roll the good numbers, it can be promising. <laughs> four plus dodge, four plus pick up. Doesn't use a reroll until here on the three plus dodge out. Hand off. So I, I think a little bit of luck, but also it's earned luck. You know, like Olivier has put me under pressure so much that I've set up really badly. So I think um, it's not like me complaining at all. I think that's luck that is earned by, um, by the way, Olivier... Uh, yeah put me under pressure, caused me to do things that I shouldn't have done. Like, by this point of the game, I'm fully aware that Olivier will roll a 4+, plus, so the fact that he goes to the ball 
doesn't surprise me at all. Um, obviously, I was hoping it wouldn't work, but... Um, and then this offense, right, again, insights into me. So I get some luck back here. That was a, a Fisher's ref that just sent off one of his catches. So we're now 9 on 9. Again, to give some insight here, I am definitely still kidding myself at this point that I can win this game. So I'm setting up to try to score quickly. Um, I'm still thinking to myself, no, we're not playing for a draw. We're trying to score quickly. And, uh, and uh, get back on defense and see if we can win the game that way. Which, again, leads to me doing things that are stupid. <laughs> a lot of ways to say I do things that are stupid. Because um, this ball is really exposed the way I leave it. So I don't like what I do here, but I know let's just take a second to think about what I could have done instead. Um, this is a greedy foul, which I think I shouldn't have done. I think probably the better thing I could have done here, it still wouldn't have been perfect because the strip ball's right there, but it probably would have at least been safer to, I'm going to have to rush, but bring the thrower to here, throw the ball to the ward answer, and then instead of doing that foul, well, that would have got up, so maybe it has to be double rush with the thrower to there. Then bring that round screen top and give the ball to the ward answer, and then at least it's on bludge. But anyway, yeah, I leave the ball here, kind of hoping that the tree and this screen is enough to to make it hard, but it really isn't. It really isn't, because there's just a three plus leap over here with the ward answer to hit the ball with strip ball, so it's really not not good enough here. And it's not just a three plus leap over, it's also really easy to get the assist and make it a two dice. I think if that Ward answer is even a square out further. That makes make things a little bit harder, so I could have done that. Um, but yeah, Leap comes in, does make it with the reroll, gets the pal, gets the knockdown. Picks the ball up on bludge, and I have not got tackle or strip ball or wrestle, so things are looking pretty bleak here. So I take very aggressive decisions from here for the same reason. Um, I'm the way I'm planning this turn I'm thinking I have to assume that we're going to get not get it first time so I'm setting up to try and get the frenzy hit to, and this is why I do some rushes here the frenzy hit has to push this way so that if the first hit doesn't make it then we have a second go at making it with that player so yeah aggressive rushes don't get it first time this does go to a one dice but we've got Juggernaut and Frenzy uh, gets that hit, so now we've got another chance to try and hit it with the U, which does work. Don't have to spend the reroll on that, so we do finally get it down. And uh, we're still <laughs> we're still nowhere near the end of this. <laughs> so go and get the ball. And don't particularly have anywhere safe to put it. So you know what's you know what will make this safe is if we can just foul this ward answer, which was two assists to get the eight plus. So we need a six plus. Uh, we didn't roll it, so now we're in trouble again. That ward answer is just going to get up and sack us again, isn't it? So yeah, the attempt to get rid of that ward answer sadly not successful. Hmm. Yeah, at least he could get the capture in play. And uh, gets the one dice pal. Gets the three plus pick up. And we're back in all sorts of trouble again. So again here I'm thinking I have to make this so I get the extra hit with the lineman here. I have to do the frenzy. I have to go all the way around because I have to make it the maximum odds of succeeding. So that is what we do. We go all the way around. Don't get it first time. Don't get it second time. Reroll here, because I won't be able to reroll as easily with the loner. Do get it on the sixth dice. So, And finally, we get that strip ball piece out of the game, and we get a scatter catch. 
So now things are looking better. Although you'll see that this is going to be the end of turn 14. And I wonder if I should have done more to get someone forward this turn because we are still now short. Even as Wood Elves, we're short of time. Um, this is another thing that Andy um, highlighted on his stream, which I think was interesting. Um, Olivier has two choices here now, right? Like, he's he's lost his best ball second piece, but he can still just like pay aggressive, put things up on my pieces and get in the way. Or he can back off and make a screen shallow in his half because actually I've only got two turns to get forward and right now even the ball player carrying the ball has to do GFIs to score. So I completely think that what Olivier does here is it's the right thing. It's what I think I would do, which is go for the screen option. Even having been so aggressive all the rest of the game, you're not likely to sack that. And I think that if you go for aggressive basing, we're just going to slip away from you. So there's a chance here to make a solid two-layer screen here. Um, but um, we get some luck back here because he fails a dodge. Um, but yes, even now, right? Like, I'm going to turn this around. Even now, obviously this is looking much more promising. Olivier is down four players. Um, we've got the ball. But we've got two turns to score. And that's the only player that can score without doing rushes. Um, so we've still got to do some quite scary dice rolls. To, to set this up so obviously if we set that up right away to be a scoring threat and then my thinking here is um, blitz with this one and it's got to do a rush so whatever happens with this we can't uh, have it be a, a wrestle down it's got to then rush and dodge to get into range and then I think we just stop with that one because that's in range now at least even if it's two rushes and we take the open space to bring the whole rest of our team to and I have to do two terrifying rushes on the ball carrier um, but then that is now in a much better scoring position than it was. Even from here, I think Olivier does a really good job of making this um, scoring position harder. Given they really haven't got much left to get in the way with, I think they do a really impressive job of making this um, as hard as they could. They're going for the ball. They don't get it, but they get the pushback. And that's why I did two rushes on that player last turn, so that player is still in scoring range. Even with the pushback, still in scoring range. Um, but I've got one re-roll here, and they made me roll dice, basically. That, that makes things harder again. Now, my decision here is like the first time in the game where I will say I definitely do what I do because... Um, because I want the SVP here more than anything else. Um, the easiest way to score here, I'm pretty sure, is to blitz this player. You could probably even just make it a three dice, because it's strength two. Yeah, it didn't even have to dodge anything. Put that there, blitz that there for three dice, which um, then mean you could just dodge that hand off and it's one re GFI. So you've got two two pluses and a three dice block. But because I want to score on this ward answer and get a level, I go for a two dice block here, which is two dice block, two plus handoff, and two rushes. I think they've made it um, harder to score with this player now, so I think this was the easiest score. But I went for the greedy one, rolled a double skull right away. So now I've got to do three two pluses without a reroll. It's a bit stressful. Um, four if you count the dodge as well, which has got a reroll. Um, but luckily for us, it all works out. So, two all draw against the number one player in the world. I will feel pleased about. Um, but definitely um, was a significant amount of luck there at the end. I think that Olivier uh, really had the... Um, really had the better of me uh, in the... Uh, second half particularly. I thought the first half I thought I played pretty well. Um, I think the powers that gave me the chance to foul off Olivier's ward answer was really impactful and, and reduced the options that they had in the game so um, I think I definitely got some good luck um, but um, the second half I think I was really just a mess for a lot of it but it was like a stressful but really enjoyable game um, 
like I, I love those games I would love every game to be more like that and less like trying to deck against dwarves but you don't always get opponents who give you a chance to do it so uh, yeah thank you to Olivier for the game it was really really fun um, and uh, if you are watching this on YouTube and you enjoy the content don't forget to leave a like and subscribe <laughs>